iya. Ale ngene aja jugo mendola. Oh iya. Ani terin di kase. Kemo shon itik nata tai ti ore se lagu do wa se ta tai ayo na tai ayo sa ayo se la. So they say that uh, laughing can cure some of your ills. So I guess if there was something that we needed to be cured of, maybe we're cured now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, in that no shuka da ngaya lo pecha na ta go tren son se ba. Ani tuwa ji la pe di shu ji ke ta go se. And in each case, modern and enjoy the rate and now called that the Nima day is a term with all. And a pantan yea to the chick in Joke Jabudo. A country in a double chick drawing any cop a cash of chumbers judge in the loop some of my ever draws on say. Nita, I think as a train. Remazon tens or shit to my returns on the yard, the Tatan do say Tangazo. I got up this morning and I wanted to read a text and I heard some really loud noise from outside and I went out. Uh, it was just when the sun was starting to come up and I went out and there was someone shouting and then we realized that there was no power. And so I just thought that we weren't going to be able to have teachings today. But then somehow, even though we don't have power, um, somehow we still have internet. I don't know how that works, but anyway, we have internet. <laughs> ที่ส่งสัญญาณเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวมองว่าเรื่องจริงก็จริงจะจับได้ก็ดีตรงนี้ตัวเจ้าดังคือคำพูดที่ยิ่งไม่ตัวเจ
I know that everyone's experiencing a lot of difficulties, a lot of fear, a lot of economic difficulties, health difficulties, and so forth. And even amongst the people, the older people that I know, the older generation of people I know, they, they say that they've never even had to experience a situation such as this. So it's very unprecedented um, times that we find ourselves in. And so uh, in terms of that, I don't even know what I can say except for I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we have to deal with this. And so, um, and so after having um, you know, greeted everyone at that, then I'm going to start giving some Dharma teachings here. Mm, that's all. Ani da dada ngegi ya waha kongye teni dadi na sa de so kola ta charu de le pe cha ru kwa nange a ti kanje gto ni da me na ndra ti senkori na ndra an de ga na ye ti ta ye nda la ti ru kwa chenge ta ti me ba da ta ka sire ti na ne yo da and then I ying a tachi dig toll of peta, kanje, kutoni rupana, and pe mamudua. And this hunza, then chen about some of the solo to go nang this tali, then it nang it, and then this hunza, this old tangela to get chase here is. And I'd like to also um, give my thanks to everyone who is um, helping with the situation, anyone who is doing any kind of assistance, particularly those people in the medical profession, doctors, nurses, and so forth, anyone who is doing any kind of actual, you know, like uh, medical work as well as, um, you know, consolation, you know, mentally, um, emotionally counseling and so forth. And so I'd like to say thank you to everyone who is, uh, who's helping out with the situation. That's <laughs> all. Zambling dig tolula, Ganga de Niji lap digiore. Ta coji nigger ben and aso da din zambling de tabu. Jung edit up murder which had here. Tang aso good sella ya. That's so sugi mong balaya, that did a witch to be over da. A ticket at the solar tachi, mongo in andra, the Gana jinch zambling jig toler peta, some of carcar pango we meet at a rimutola. ในเล่ปานจวัชชิวิชิงยอสิดัวตัดเดนดาวจิชิงดูเอนิงาโซเตยาเตโซโกลาตาจิจุติดาวจินังตุยามองบาคันเรตาซาเรดาวจินเอน
Kahiji Benadi Natada with you, said the bed. Thanks, Sabo to Lama, he go do nang it. The last sobata, Mambuji dua. The dente hit at the sobatachi, Mongol, and then the chaga do such any jig here, Yadigala. And then I saw Mong Chiva jig de jig killing on Yawache Matabanda witch. On the Kuranga jig of Junda, which is the Kuranga jig here, Yadina, which is summoned up. In a jig mongol, did the witch chaga on a mena? Chana and Kan Chiba may summoned up. The dish jinny dung as a mongoji ludo. Now men of it, that I rig up the ballad that Tamchi day tasty. Mugging the head Yamaguvachi, Yogan Munich, the town to Gabla. I and And so, um, when people are studying in universities, then they all have their own areas of specificity, uh, their own majors, such as you know environmental studies or um, epidemiology and so forth. And and they have been telling people, have been warning people about certain things that can come, certain. Um, dangerous situations that we could um, have to face, and for most of us, we either um, don't accept, don't don't entirely accept what they say, and they just say, "Oh, well, that's what you found in your research," but whatever, we kind of ignore it and we put it aside. But uh, in the situation we're in now, the situation has fully presented itself to us without needing to learn about it from a book or hear about it from another person. It is directly presenting itself right in our face, and then we have. No choice but to accept it and to to understand it, and so that's actually good for us right now. We actually know. I mean, that the Yam the Sandun, the which in here, Yajikatachi, Nambig, a young sage, done Zambelin to your debate. And they done Namachi Pagi Jagala Tango Chonke, and Jagani Tsukasaka la Tati Janare, and their Nagin Chick no Tati, Casacalata, a Pango de Giore, and then the Sons and so many some of Pamba in a Tati, so Nanga Tenet is second repa man in the witch. And so um, Buddhism is a path which combines um, this principle, the principles of psychology, of the science of the mind, um, with the path of nonviolence. And uh, uh, and so, um, you know, this, this system, um, this tradition then was founded in Buddhism or founded in India and then spread to China, Tibet and other regions and, uh, and spread eventually all over the world. And so it, it original, the original real kind of, um, proclaimers of this path of psychology, um, um, mind science and nonviolence are the Buddhists. Oh, that's all. I think that this one is that the example of Jagala, that local heating money, that's how you get not that in trouble. That the big that's so tender of my but that you said some of the don't see and it did this genetic non tide to the room of Jenny here in Bare. Did the Jay get the denominating Sanji Mata de Gio? That did the color Sanji Coronte Puchu come in a tendilla pesh with some of Tangi. Could Tabari recruit the low chamber to Sanico land jam tongue in the day. The Ditabacu in a chachin. 
Tako the little And so a few years ago um, in India, they made um, basically a, a mini a mini series of the Buddha's life. And it wasn't just taken from Buddhist history, but taken from, you know, all aspects of ancient Indian history and historical texts and so forth um, to, to make a, a live action, you know, full on TV series of the life of the Buddha. And in that, um, you know, from the time that the Buddha was a very young child, uh, he was asking people questions that were very difficult to answer, you know, types of questions that even when he asked himself, he was feeling like, oh man, if somebody asked me this question, I would be like nervous to even, I wouldn't even know how to answer it. So he was asking like very difficult questions of people. And he had one tutor who was the only one who could answer his questions. And eventually um, his parents, his father um, thought that this, this tutor was kind of steering him in the direction of the Dharma instead of as a, you know, as a prince or a politician. And so he eventually kicked that, that tutor out. He cast him out. And so at that point, then the Buddha had no one who could answer his questions anymore. So anyway, from the very young age, Buddha was uh, such a very, you know, critical thinker. And in that cup, the Duke of the Lover, Konga, that the Kini Gomiatis or Rawadang, the Lady Kong Lubdawati, Gom Givy and Rawadang, that the Yetat is of Lubdi, and the Kongi Tadet is of Gom La Gawo Gom La Gawachi. Then it did gong the Wiji 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 Nitati, we be need to get Tula. Ta Congo Tati, Chug Nilo Tonga Sego Marevela, that Nilo Tonga dig taller than a pay. Tati Pagini did a big shunga with the Jim Barn Dugal. Then it did Tak of the Gong Jamin Tamatin Vikajari, though I did Tamatin Dugala, Jet Tabajin and Tonga Tavinich. Trava, younger than a ten support and draw Janet. And so the, the, the way that we can understand the fact that he had these questions is that his teacher was teaching him some very profound paths of practice of Shini Chipuri Vela. ตาสะโกนินาเตสอตาเตดิจิครองเดชินีเตเดลาเวเซดาลาสะสะโจกินียาซิกบิเซเซปาดินโดยเจอระวาลาซัมเทนเจมิเจเซโมปาเดลา
And, um, and it was when he reached that point and he realized for himself that his path was still not complete. And that's why he had these so profound and difficult to answer questions. It was because he had reached such a high level and yet he knew that he was still not finished. And so it was, you know, through that, that he eventually later, um, added in, or, you know, in addition to that practice, pursued this path of, of, um, Vipassana meditation, which eventually led him to Buddhahood. So I think just saying this alone is a little bit difficult to understand, but taking this as an example, then I'm going to explain these uh, these the aspects of uh, calm abiding and insight meditation. So it's like I was saying last time uh, that when we talk about calm abiding, what is meant by that is a mind which is single pointedly or one pointedly focused upon a virtuous object. And so through that path, the practice of calm abiding, uh, Shamatha meditation, then our mind becomes more and more and more and more and more stable. And so at first, our mind is extremely coarse. We're totally caught up in these, um, these, uh, afflictive emotions, afflictive thoughts of attachment, aversion, anger, and so forth. And our mind is so coarse, is so um, active and so coarse that we don't even recognize that we have a more subtle state of mind within us. And so when we're pre- going through these stages of calm abiding, our mind becomes more and more stable to the point where we can reach those levels of more um, subtle levels of mind. I mm-hmm. ダディニガソタヤンハコジチェグンテコゴルダアペナガソタタタメイシメインロワチケタメタトログンロワガソントンデジデメタトログンロワチケタダディリガルビゲアニンタチガセレガソサンデンゲタサンデンゲニセチタ
mind and reach this more subtle level of mind in uh, this level of meditative concentration. Okay. And so and so um, at first we develop this peaceful state of mind, which is developed just by focusing single pointedly upon this virtuous object. And then there's another type of meditative meditation there, which we call the meditation on the peaceful and coarse mind. And what that means is that we, we consider um, the, um, our own state of mind as being something very coarse and heavy and turbulent and mixed up and, uh, and then we we see those higher levels of mind, these uh, levels of mind of the God realms or of this um, samadhi or meditative concentration realms, and we see that they are peaceful, gentle, serene, and so forth. And then we we continue pursuing our meditation and seeing how much of our you know coarse mind can dissolve or diminish in how much of this these qualities of peace and gentleness and serenity we can develop. And then at a certain point, we reach a level where um, things no longer appear to exist, but also don't appear as something which is non existent, where our mind completely merges with the object of meditation and there's no longer any distinction between them. It's like dissolving into space. And at that point, there's no longer some mind which is separate from some kind of object. And this is a description then of, of that point that we were talking about that the Buddha reached, which is that highest, the pinnacle of, of conditioned existence, that highest state in samsara, the most subtle state of mind in samsara. Oh, Mm-hmm. 
ตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาตาต
Ani kendi sonunda di sanji geta kendi seni tega seko tar tar tang java dige thato la pentu kumedos tan thato de pember chebala nu pi ni so kangi ba den thong bu dos hi go do re go do den non pro de nyong ro dos ha khong gen thato gumba da te chare da and so what the Buddha saw then was that this, um, this, pre- this path, this worldly path of bringing the mind to more and more subtle states, more and more tranquil states, isn't ultimately helpful. Um, and what he saw and what it became what is the ultimate intent or the ultimate, the ultimate wisdom or understanding of the Buddha is that you don't just need to make the mind more subtle. You need to actually see the reality of things. You need to know the reality of all things. You need to be aware of that reality. And so uh, he said then that this um, calm abiding practice is still important, but ultimately the most important thing, the primary thing ultimately is this vipassana, the special insight, which is the insight into the reality of all things. And so what I'm explaining here and what I want you to understand and be certain of in terms of you know where we're going with this discussion is that last time we met, um, I was talking to you about calm abiding practice. And now I'm showing you how calm abiding practice joins with and works together with and then transfers into that path of vipassana. So make sure that you understand where we're going here. Okay. And so I'm um, presenting a, a brief summary right now of, in general, what is calm abiding, what is special insight, and then picking out some key features and some specificities of those, uh, for example, of insight meditation and explaining those things. Oh, Mm-hmm. And so I'm not basing the discussion on one particular text, which gives one specific presentation of one path of Vipassana. And the reason for that is because... Um, there are many different people who are attending this teaching. And so amongst those people, there may be some who are already practicing at a very high level. There may be some who um, are, are somewhat acquainted with this. And there may be some who just want to know in general what is meant by calm abiding and insight by Shamatha and Vipassana. And so it wouldn't make sense for me to, it makes more sense for me to explain this in a way that combines all the various teachings of Shamatha and Vipassana um, from both the higher and lower vehicles and kind of give a presentation of what Vipassana is and what, um, what that is other than taking Vipassana and then pulling out one specific practice of that and specifically explaining that because that might not be helpful for other people. Um, and so I think it's more helpful to give this general mm-hmm. presentation, which kind of gives the overview of what Shamatha and Vipassana are. Uh, 
Krong Moda Vokari me de Hie Yabaina. And Chenabaga O Ta, Kateri de Yamlanchi Muntim Rongaina. And Chenaba O Nati Gongo Saris, Kateri Yendala Tachu River. Lampon de Yendachi Kendela Shature, Teniko Kawa in a Shature River. And so if I get which Tamboji or Tiditi Reda Sinitam is. And so if you then understand this presentation, this general presentation of what is Shamatha and Vipassana, um, and then the, the kind of foundations of Shamatha and Vipassana, then you can understand um, for yourself then, oh, okay, now I understand what they are and how they work, and now I understand what I need. So I should uh, go further into that path, and then you can learn from that, learn about that more specifically elsewhere. And so, if I give you this foundation of shamatha and vipassana, then you can understand the essence of shamatha and vipassana, the basics of what they are, and then also realize for yourself where uh, where where you fit in that and what you need from that, and then you can pursue that. so Ah, same day. Ah, Nasola Tata, that thing in Mom Kaduna Jihie, the Hie Japan Nasu, same day at the Nichat. The same Koranga thing there, that thing Segumare, same Koranga Tachipa, thing, thing, little ducal at the Nichayong, a co cassid, de chayo thing, a young witch, that Nasology, your debate, that digitula, ma, the Nerumba. In the mama, ni do the cup de bala. Ni ni coma, pub do the cup de la, and it be genese. The de la teni yamnetia on the rumba, 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 rumba tatikin and drone with the sola teni, netari huba nagi di rumba de jajore. Nando comes who comes who make combas in, comes on the sola pajani sem de tava tavala ma jando de tene. Come the jani here get it. And so um, it's like I, I commonly say, um, uh, our mind has in its depths, in the very depths of our mind, it is itself um, calm, peaceful, um, blissful. And when we practice in stages, uh, through these developmental stages of calm abiding, then we can bring our mind to a state where it really does abide mm -hmm. in that peaceful tranquility, in that peaceful state. Mm -hmm. And uh, we follow those stages, and those stages yeah. can be applied to, um, you know, often a common presentation is that they are applied to the three realms. And so we have uh, corresponding levels of mind which correspond with the three realms of the desire realm, the form realm, and formless realms. And then we have uh, descriptions of those levels of mind and practices for developing the mind through those stages. And then we also have practices which correspond with what we call Lasso Kino, which is the Kamsumba, the Diganla, and the Netab Gikoni. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with that calm abiding meditation, we have practices, uh, levels mm -hmm. of practice, which correspond with uh, more coarse or more subtle <coughs> objects of focus. And then we have um, levels which correspond with ways of placing our mind within the object. So we have what we are called the nine methods for placing the mind in calm abiding, which is accomplished by ways of these six powers. And so we have all of these processes and stages of development. Okay, let's talk. I change the door to some of the top. I'm also saying the more. I said it. Tempo. Jenny. Nibi Chani Yang. Jenny said. That day Yang do the color. Yang. Jenny. Jenny. You're it. That Jenny. Jenny. Carry your sinner. Then it be. Tower. Tower. And Roy. You're the color. Pansom. Jenny. Jig. Down. I saw the car. At the same day game. Pache da 
and so um the the abiding aspect that restful aspect of our mind uh is what we refer to when we talk about calm abiding and there's one problem that can happen when we rest in calm abiding and what that is is that if our mind becomes more and more and more and more subtle then at a certain point it becomes as if our kind of our real awareness becomes unmanifest it's like we no longer are very aware we're no longer really seeing clearly and we could say at that point that our mind is still uh in calm abiding it is resting peacefully but our mind becomes kind of um, unclear or unworkable. And so it's at that point that, that we need to really focus on the development of that clarity or that radiance of mind, which is developed through the practice of um, special insight or Vipassana practice. And then this whole thing, so many things. And so at a certain point, we need to consider that the more that we see, the more that we see, the more that we are aware of, the better off we are. And that actually um, getting into this state, which is this extreme level of calm where we no longer feel or see or understand anything, is kind of like a, you know, we're, we're worse off in that state, actually. We need to think about that. <laughs> And so um to to conclude this or to sum this up then um, that abiding aspect of our mind, which is taking that very turbulent, mixed up state of mind and bringing it more and more and more and more calm until it becomes very calm and peaceful and it can rest or it can abide, it can remain in an object. That's this calm abiding aspect. And then on the basis of that, when we develop this capacity to see the reality, um, this um, expansion of that um, aware as awareness aspect or that um, um, radiant aspect, clarity aspect, then that is uh, the practice of vipassana. And so that's the, the general presentation of calm abiding um, vipassana, shamatha and vipassana. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so um uh, this may be too much information right now, but I know that there's some new people here. So just to clarify for them what, what's going on here is that normally our mind is so stirred up. Our mind is so moving so much that we, um, you know, we can't even have any kind of clarity in terms of an object. Our, that movement isn't, doesn't let our mind rest in an object, doesn't let our mind see an object. And so because it's, it's not being able to see anything, there's no clarity there at all. And so... 
um, we have to be able to resolve or to pacify that, that turbulence of mind to be able to get to a point where we have any clarity in terms of seeing the object. And so it's, like, it's the same like when you have very disturbed water, like in a pond that's very mixed up, that there's no clarity in that water. All of the, the, um, the filth, all of the dirt, the silt from the bottom of the water, from, the, from the, um, the depths of the water gets stirred up and turned up so that there's no clarity in that water. But when we allow that to rest, we stop stirring it or stop allowing it to be stirred, then all of that silt falls to the bottom and then we gain that clarity. And so that's what we do with calm abiding. Mm. Uh, meditation. And so since that um that silt or that filth has merely settled to the bottom, as soon as the mind stirs up again, that filth can stir up again. And so not just leaving it at that, but in order to actually completely eliminate the filth, not just let it um, fall into a, a, a non-manifest or sleepy state, but to actually completely eliminate it, then we need this process or this practice of the special insight of Vipassana. Uh, Mm -hmm. But the process or the, the, um, the agent or the process which actually cleans the water and the process which cleans the mind are very different. So to, to purify the mind, to clean the mind, you need to have a clear awareness. You need to see um, the reality of things to, to abandon them or to clean them. Whereas to clean some water, you just need some kind of machine, some kind of filtration system in order to clean the water. Mm -hmm. And so what is this um, filth of the mind, this thing that needs to be cleaned in the mind? And so from one side or one aspect of that is our not seeing the reality or our unawareness. The other side is our grasping. And so um, we, that can be the yonder cheeks on the tambo de mantumba chick. Hello, mantumba de gantana, zumba de chick. Read it. The neck could teach me the tambo mantumba de chelchi, the color zumba de chuni dung. And so the real problem is that first we don't see the reality of things and by not seeing them, then we start grasping at them. And so that's the real problem that we have. That's that filth in the mind that needs to be cleaned. So, yeah, and so that then was the, the difference between the presentation of the difference between Calm abiding and special insight or shamatha and vipassana. Ani ta ngegi dinu na chi ni se de ta ta ringa so dua chi nang ba chi de hi yo ta ta lam thong de ta di che tang ge lam thong re pe mang bo yo re ji ten de lam thong yo re ji ten ni de lam thong yo re de ta ni ta ri de na ji ten ni de bi ge lam thong ta de hi ki yo ji ten ni de ba se wo san ji kho rang rang de si pi di de la de nang bi meng ta di ko de de le ji ten ni de bi so se chi uh, I'm here, you know, speaking specifically about uh, Buddhist Buddhism, Buddhist practice. And so when I'm talking about Vipassana here, uh, you know, there are many different uh, types of Vipassana, many different practices of Vipassana, some which are called worldly paths of Vipassana and some which are called non-worldly or transmundane, supramundane, um, transcendent, we could say, 
levels of Vipassana. And what's meant by super mundane Vipassana, which is what I'm talking about here, it means the Vipassana that is in accordance with the vision of the Buddha and which leads to Buddhahood. Okay. And this one, the name that I read, Marik Pate the Jek, the color that I didn't Zimba Ni, the Hie Dingendita, Sanji Hie the Gyota. And so, number two, no don't know Chalu. And so, when I was talking before about the fact that we have the ignorance or unawareness, and then it, in addition to that, or on the basis of that, we grasp. That is the specific presentation of the Buddha, and that's the general presentation or the general um, framework or foundation of all Buddhist traditions. Oh, that's all. And then this one, the Dangi Dini Pata, Chichin, any day, Lam Tongo, and Bajas Pa, I see us. Okay, and so now taking that as our mm. basis, now I'm going to start talking about the actual stages of vipassana. And then the sun vanta maripa se dinge kelata charashi with the yore rapa rapa ni chap 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 and so um, ignorance itself um, has many different levels of coarseness and subtlety. And so starting from very coarse aspects, it can become very, very subtle. And when we discuss the two, you know, our ignorance and then grasping in that presentation, then the grasping is more coarse, the ignorance is more subtle. But even within the ignorance itself, there are many different levels of coarseness and subtlety, even just within ignorance. Uh, and so it is mm. on the basis of, or because of that ignorance that we can have grasping. It's uh, because of the ignorance that grasping appears or grasping happens. Mm. Okay. Uh -huh. So do you understand that? Because it's going to be from <clears throat> that level of understanding, which I'm going to continue to explain. So, so Kinder Mishay told me to go ahead and just give one more little overview of the difference between Shamatha and Vipassana, and then we're going to continue. Oh, lasa, lasa. oh no, the difference between uh, the ignorance and the grasping. And so first we have this ignorance, which is not seeing, not seeing some reality of the object. And then when we don't see the reality, then we grasp it as something which it's not, you know? We don't see what it is, and then we start grasping it as being something else. And so that's why this is the more subtle and this is the more coarse, because this forms almost the basis of that. This is, and so we also have coarseness and subtlety from the grasping itself is more coarse than the ignorance, and then the ignorance itself also has further levels of subtlety. And this is all what we were referring to as the filth of mind, the thing that needs to be abandoned in this path of, so this is what is being stirred up. So first we want to calm that down through shamatha, and then we need to get rid of it. So that was like purifying the water in the lake, the dirty water or whatever. We need to actually get rid of this ignorance and grasping. Let's okay. Let's end that the nonitachi. ま、<音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> And so starting with uh, the most coarse level of ignorance, then we would, we would refer back to what we call the ignorance of karmic cause and result, uh, the, the ignorance of cause and result. So when, when we have a thought that says, if I do this action, I'm going to get that wholesome result. If I do this action, I'm going to get that unwholesome result or that negative result. And having ignorance about that process is what we would call the most coarse level of ignorance. Mm. And then, so, 
So Jane does some of Tamba in a tati, Maranga, Yabu, Chebu, Samba de, Tabu de Reta, Tamjela. Tin Zumbling, Naran, the last Mabat Chego Samba, Naran Trahu Chego, Naran Yahu Chego, Naran Kihu Chego, Naran Dehu Chego Samba de Yodicorete, in a young Tiko, Chedon, he the Mahigoni, and a Kashijel, Yawacha, Kashijel to Wacha, the Kangomo in Chago, your rest, that they Jimbil Mombat. And so then to, to show this, we, we can talk about how everyone in the world wants to make them the best for themselves. They want to make themselves the happiest. They want the best. They want the most all for themselves. But there's a distinction in whether they actually understand how to accomplish that for themselves or not. And so that's why for some people, they actually get that, that happiness. They get the best. They get everything. And other people don't, and that's because they have ignorance of this process of cause and result. Mm-hmm. So in Buddhism, we refer to this process as karmic cause and result, or karmic actions and their results. Mm-hmm. That and then in, in connection with this that we're talking about right now, uh, when the Buddha first taught, uh, we, in the tradition, we say, turn the wheel of Dharma, which is a term which refers to giving a Buddhist teaching. So when the Buddha turned the first wheel of Dharma, it was in a place called Varanasati, and the Buddha taught what's called the Four Noble Truths. And those Four Noble Truths can be grouped into two causes and results. So we have the causes and results of samsara and the causes and results of nirvana. Mm-hmm. And then you soon van galata pena that tela taste. I know that the world takes mount at all. Hey, now that the Cassel Lanton de la Tink City here in a matu chigi lanson gong give your money. Cassie Gomia Kangi Bate, Nuis Patente, the hits at any dig to the Yaji Java. This would mean the hitting my job at the Lanton hit to be an out your maris. And so this may seem like too much information, but um, but it's really important that if you're going to practice Vipassana, first you have to be shown directly this, um, this thing that you're going to meditate on. You have to know it really precisely, and then you can meditate on it. Without knowing something first, you can't do any meditation. Okay. And then this one, then, 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 uh the don't have a ranking to read it thus, but that Duma say Ral. I could Duma say only that Duma Cheta, Cheva Cheva, Chua Chua, Co Kashi Tada, Nyong Yubayore, Kashi Manuna, John Chuchu Dowich. Then in Yama takes a chain at three dome, Tramo takes chain at Trangrom, the Rigida, the letter Duma de Yama, not Swahini, that turned the Matapa. Don't have a ranking to read it thus. And so then, um, you know, I'm showing, you know, through this, you can see me, I can, I know that you're there. So let's take my body as an example, me as an example. And so in the beginning of these teachings of the four truths, then you can say, we can talk about my body and we say that um, my body is impermanent. It is changing from moment to moment. And then my body is suffering. It is the nature of dissatisfaction or suffering that even just with a little too much heat, we're uncomfortable. A little too much cold, we're uncomfortable, and so forth. 
so when explaining that first step or that first uh, aspect of impermanence, then there's many levels, of course, in subtle impermanence. On the most subtle level, it is the fact that things uh, change and disintegrate from moment to moment. And on a more coarse level, it is the case that, you know, when um, you're born and then at a certain point you will die and you will say, oh, they died, they're impermanent. So that's a more coarse level. And then there are many levels in between that. And so in that first step of learning about impermanence in the terms of the Four Noble Truths, you would learn, you know, go through explanations of all of these levels of coarse and subtle impermanence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so then uh, when you have a person then who has already trained through these stages of calm abiding and they haven't learned about these things then um, then when they're taught about impermanence then their eyes open wide and see this nature first from the very coarse impermanent of uh, death and so forth, and eventually down through the more subtle levels of impermanence. And their eyes are open wide to this new reality of impermanence. And when the Buddha taught, he taught that, uh, that, uh, all things that exist are either material or mind. And so you'll see then, that person would then see that not only is the body that they're being shown about uh, impermanent, but that everything is impermanent, you know, mountains and everything. So the Buddha taught that everything can be, everything that exists is either something physical or um, substantial, or it is a mind. And then through seeing, you know, first the impermanence of the body, then you would be able to understand that person would be able to understand and see the impermanence of everything. Mm-hmm. And so even wouldn't be inappropriate to say that at that point when you've realized the impermanence, when you've seen the impermanence of everything, that you've realized the nature of everything, uh, that you have actually, that you know really the essence of everything. That would, would not be inappropriate to say. Mm-hmm. But really the impermanence that we see is actually more coarse, is quite coarse. But the um, in the Hinayana tradition, they actually do have, um, you know, practices, or they they really do reach levels of seeing very very subtle levels of impermanence. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
อันนี้เอ่อจริงทั้งอาศัยเป็นนี่ก็คือการงานจุ่มวัยนั่นเท่าไรก็คือเด็ดก็ไม่จุ่มวัยนั่นเองอาศัยที่งูนี่ยังว่าจะหักงูดูอันนี้ดูงานจุ่มวัยนั่นสุดทุ่มเองเดี๋ยวว่าจะจุ่มวัยนั่นเองก็ถึงได้งูนี่ทุ่มเองแต่นี่การเสด็จยืนแต่งจีจุลจีงูอ่ะสิ And so, what is the benefit in in knowing this? Uh, so, for one, we are increasing our awareness, increasing our understanding, our wisdom. So we say that the Buddha is the omniscient one, the all-knowing one, and so we are increasing our wisdom, our knowledge of the world. And on another level, or from another perspective. Then, whatever kind of situation we're faced with, whether that's happiness or suffering, if we get into some difficult situation, then we know that both these uh, qualities or both these experiences of happiness and suffering abide in that nature of impermanence. And so, even if we have some difficult situation, we are able to abide and forbear that situation with patience. And even if we are in some Um, wholesome or good situation, something fortunate is happening to us. We're able to face that without it uh, stirring our ego and so forth. And so there are many qualities that can be gained through that realization. ทุ่มเจ็บอะไรลาวจิกโกมจังที่กันเลยนี่สิเป็นสบู่จินทงเลยจีนั่นที่โกมตัวกูอืมเอ่อที่ป้าตั้งโกมบ้านสินี่จีโกมตัวกูตั้งชีรับสิ่งนี้โกมตัวกูชีรับดีเจ้าหน้าที่เท่าไหร่ก้าวทุบเอชกันมาไม่ไปนิสกรังมุนีสูสลจะชาร์วาสีไอ้นี่ก็ชาร์วที่เดียร์ and so this is um you know The way that this works for for meditation is that first you have to hear about, uh, for example, impermanence, and then contemplate it, and then when you meditate on it, then you directly see it. You, it's not just something you heard about, but it's something you directly see. You directly see that that is the reality of things, and once you've directly seen that reality, then it no longer relies upon hearing about it from someone else. It's a, it's a direct experience for you that you you actually experience that reality. อาล่ะสุดท้ายที่ท่าทางฟงเรดวัส and that and that is something which is superior to the understanding you gained through study through hearing and contemplation and that's what we call special insight ท่าที่ทางฟงยิ่งบิจุนเซนการเรศดีเป็นชรงก์งาร์ทินรวิกิตินคุณเป็นนิสัยเดมันทงไปตาลีเดนีลาดังกูกูมีตับดีกูนี่ไรมุกัลล่ะท่าที่บีตับดีกูนี่ที่หัวนรกเลย Go be top di go ni tene ko pe sosu gun thong di kala sosu le make dang kin sosu thong di kala de la tene ngar ma thong be ge la pa hin thong ina la thong se. And so that's why it's called vipassana or special or superior vision or special superior seeing special superior insight is because it's something that you didn't see before. It's something superior to that. It's something that you see, which is superior to what you had seen before through your meditation. But it, it does have to be preceded by understanding it through um, study, through hearing, contemplation, and so forth. But then, when you actually see it through meditation, then you're having this vision for yourself. You're seeing it for yourself. You're seeing that reality for yourself, and that seeing or that insight is insight which is superior to or something extra, something more than you had ever seen before. And that's why it's called. Special or superior insight of vipassana. Hmm. So, at that time, the the ah lantong that lelahu tapani majjerche and chunson lantong seede kandere the tambo tibache. Ani dene gomche. Ani soso ujula dene gomi tabdi goni kiyomuta the pena jan mashivai. And so this is an example, starting with um, the the kind of easiest practice of vipassana, which is the practice of impermanence, to show you what vipassana is and how it works. And so I use this as an example. So first, you have to hear about, you have to learn about 
uh, impermanence. And then when you meditate on permanence, then you actually have that vision or that awareness, that sight, that special insight for yourself. And so that's an example of just one level or one, <clears throat> one way or one practice of Vipassana to illustrate what Vipassana is and how it works. Mm-hmm. That's all. And this is it. Then the talk as a same with any jarum do same thing in the Mipa Yodichi Bachin Rogu Yota. This on the Narang Narang at Sumi Piki to my yore Narang Jemba till a pump me picking to my yote yore. That tendrichil attention, that was so chick same day in Jordan or tendrichil to my yore. And so then we can talk about suffering. And so generally speaking, when we talk about suffering, we're talking about uh, a mentally experienced thing. We're talking about something, we talk about it on the basis of mind. And that suffering always has some kind of reference or some kind of object. And so we have um, suffering, which is experienced when we are referring to or considering ourselves. And we have suffering or dissatisfaction. It's kind of synonymous here. Um, when viewing something else, when when thinking of or observing something else. And that didn't only mix a penny chita, Narang Lute, Ta Cassere, Ta Narang, Ta Narang Senate, Luchigo Mana Pieta, Narang de Chick, Chuchin, Kurang, Teca Samotanson, Jer Doma de Rendo, Setting a penna with it and by now. Ta Naso Pena Chick Casse. Uh Mm-hmm. And so I'll give you an example now about how um, how suffering is our own nature, or it is um, that that we have this uh, this suffering um, kind of as a basic characteristic of our experience. So suffering or dissatisfaction, it's something which comes about naturally. We don't have to do anything or strive in any way to bring ourselves into a state of suffering or to develop suffering for ourselves. Whereas happiness is something that we actually have to work towards, that we actually have to strive towards or intentionally develop to get. And so everything that exists, not just people, all follow through with a process of first arising, second abiding, and third disintegrating or dying. So like for humans, we have birth, aging, sickness, and death. It's kind of the same thing, but this applies to everything, not just humans, not just living beings. And so I'm not going to talk too much about this, but just that when we see this, then we really understand, we see that reality that all of this is really the ground of or the foundation for um, dissatisfaction or suffering. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
when it is so here, or Tanga some murder within a chick, Jagga Nam Chick with Duma singing over. Think the door is on the crowns on a tacky, the chicks savage Duma as a bath and she any. That tell her some of Tanga Rapani, the Nitawalama, and drone in the gin go for your cella. And so, in terms of meditation on uh, the suffering nature, then we have many different levels, starting from more um, more coarse to more subtle. Like, for example, just considering your own sufferings as a human, the sufferings of birth, aging, sickness, and death, the sufferings of animals, like you know the the fears of. Uh, the suffering of being eaten by other animals and so forth. And so they're individually explained and we go through and meditate on each of those individually. So And then for those, we practice uh, meditation in a way that, um, that, alternates between what we call an analysis or analytic meditation and then another meditation that we call placing or resting meditation. And so what, what that means is that first we analyze, we kind of see, is this the case or not? And then when we see that it is the case, then we just rest. We, we place our mind or leave our mind in that state without moving. And then we go back and forth. We alternate between those two aspects. Okay. Okay. And for those of you who are already on like higher levels of practice, or for those of you who are engaging in this practice, then um, for anyone, we're going to then do a little bit of meditation, just a bit, and then I'm going to move into another topic. Can I mention also parsing chik shaga? Oh, let's go. Revela. Love it. Okay, so I'm not big revela. Oh, chuta cheka zimsa sonla. Oh, revela. Love it. Oh, katu chonga. Love it. Okay, so we're going to take a 15-minute break here. So we'll come back at uh, f- quarter till on whatever time zone you're on. Mm-hmm. Also, also. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to meditate. Okay. And so to begin this, we should think of our motivation being to benefit ourselves and others that first by gaining some experience of this meditation and some, you know, gaining the benefits of this meditation for ourselves that we will take that experience that we have and share that with others so that they can also be benefited. So we can start with that as our motivation. And so consider that for a moment at the beginning. And for those of you who are already in this path of Buddhist practice, then generate bodhicitta and, um, you know, consider that for a moment as we begin. So we're going to begin by meditating on impermanence. And then the data, 
and so as we begin this, uh, the way that we'll meditate is that for me, I feel like I gain more or I see more. I have a more powerful experience of this if I begin by meditating on impermanence of myself. And so how do we do that? So first we can think about how much we've changed since we were a child up until now. And then we can take that further thinking, how much have we changed just from this morning up to now? And in that, we can consider that in terms of our general situation, in terms of our mind, how has our mind changed since this morning up to now? How's our body changed, our feelings and our body have changed and so forth. So, and so that's how we're going to do it. So let's do this together. And so don't proceed like you would in calm abiding where you're just blocking thoughts. So try and see your own experience, your own situation very clearly. And think about this in terms of uh, the past, present, and future. Think about where have you been in the past or where, you know, what situation have you been in in the past? Where have you arrived to now and where will you move to in the future? And think about that, the, the changing nature, the impermanence of that. And we can think about our minds as well. Thinking on this subtle level of mind, think about how our mind can be in uh, experiencing happiness and joy and 
in a single moment can be transformed into despair. And that as we are in a moment of suffering or despair, in a single moment that can change to a sense of neutrality and even back to joy. And that our mind never remains still for a single moment. That it's constantly changing. And then taking what we have seen in ourselves, then again, take that same vision, that same understanding and look outward at external, the external world and external objects and see that nature within them. Oh, <laughs> So um, if you have another practice that you do before you move into your main practice, it's good to, um, to do this meditation as a preliminary to, to um, precede your main practice meditation. Or otherwise, you can just use this as your main practice of meditation. That, and by, by seeing this, by understanding this, by being aware of this nature, then our minds will expand more and we will see more and more of the reality of things. No, and so now if we move into something which we could say is a more subtle level of this, then um, first we talk about ignorance. And so what ignorance is, is the mere not seeing of some real nature of things. Uh, whatever level you're talking about. Uh, so as ignorance can be talked about on many levels, we can be talking about different levels of what we're talking, we're referring to as reality. So whatever level of reality you're talking about, the not seeing of that reality is ignorance. Mm, 
ตะจัยฉะเนี่ยอันนี้ก็สุดท้ายนูดาตะกังงามบูจิฉะเดเดเตกาเสสุสุกุภะกินนามุลตะเตดาดินซะบาเซกุมาเรเวลาอืมตะ
And so up to that point, you know, I think there is nobody who would ever say that I or the self doesn't exist. Everyone would just assume, of course, that they exist. ตัดดิงาสุจิโกปุงโบเซดิเซนจงอ่ะจงเจเตอาจิงาสุดิฮาทาลกัดเดรวะตัดดิมายิบาจินามตัดนางบาเจดังติกัดเดดุกาลาต
And our brain is also not like that. It relies upon all kinds of uh, mutually um, assisting kind of causes and conditions and functions in order for it to do something. It's not just some solidly, singularly existing like machine that you could pull out and say, this is it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when we think about the brain itself, then also the brain is entirely made up of, of elemental things, of the, of the four elements. And so those four elements are, you know, themselves uh, are individual, you know, that, that, that there's no brain without the combination of these things. It's not something that exists in and of itself or on its own. So we don't have a lot of time today, so I think that, you know, but we can um, practice in a way or meditate in a way that we go through and so we need to think, uh, is this thing that we grasp at as our self, we go through our entire body from our head to our feet and from our feet back up to our head. And we think, is this that thing that I grasp to when I think of me or when I think of myself? And we go through and we examine everything in our body and experience. And so then similarly, another um, reasoning that, that, that uh, is presented by Buddhism is that when you go through and you think of all of these different parts of your body, all that you find is actually things that you consider to be my eye, my ear, my nose, and so forth. Uh, and so you only find things that you consider my, not not me. And so when you say my, it automatically means that that's not me. It means it's something which is separate from me, just like when you say my house or my car. And so you never find you never find me. You only find things that are mine. Mm. And so then when we have done this investigation, we've examined in this way, and then we know something, we realize something. That mind itself is called... Uh, we have a lot of bad, weird translations for this in English. So some people just call it wisdom. The Tibetan word is sherap. Uh, the, the Sanskrit word is prajna. And so it, it sometimes is just uh, described as a discriminating intelligence. Um, so that's, that's what you find there. That's what that mind is. Oh, no. So that's what you find there. That's what you find there. And then when we have that result of our investigation of our analytic process and we rest our mind or just leave our mind in the, in that, um, that conclusion or that which we have seen or realized through that investigation, that's called meditating on selflessness. And so just understanding that um, 
is what we call knowing or understanding selflessness. But then having a direct experience of that in the face of your mind, uh, in your mind's eye, is what we call realizing selflessness. So you understood that? ngasotinramlatiomarewatatekipatsetrawakuyakalindowamagenta and so it's it's difficult because we're not actually sitting in front of us, uh, in front of each other to have a discussion about this, but otherwise it would be convenient for us to like, you know, go back and forth about this a bit. And you should know also that this isn't like a command that this is, you have to think in this way or you have to believe this. This is something, you know, that, that you should examine and see the, the results of your own examination that you should find out for yourself through the investigation. Mm. and so those of you who have experience in meditation will really see the distinction between calm abiding and insight here when you do this practice because uh, between shamatha and vipassana because in shamatha it's almost like you put your mind to sleep where here in vipassana you're really seeing the source you're seeing the real root of all of your difficulties and this is where that that root can actually be pulled out. You can actually uproot or pull pull your problems out by the root. And so when you see that truth of selflessness, then because that belief in the self, that grasping at the self is the real source of all of our difficulties and problems, then by seeing selflessness, then we really do encounter and engage in. We 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 call we we in uh, we engage in less mistaken or uh, you know troublesome actions. And so then, just like we did before, let's meditate again. And so we'll do a bit of examination, and then you rest in the result of that examination.
โอ้ลาสุตัดดีตั้งลาสุจิงจิตองก็ตาเงี้ยตาโกมยาเตียนเราได้จบตัดดีเดี๋ยวจะยิ่งสละ so that was the primary thing that I was <coughs> um, intending to to teach in terms of meditation today อันนี้ตาทีนั่งลงละจิตเรียนตาดูว่าเช่นอะไรยังมองบุจีจิตอยู่เลยเดี๋ยวสงสัยแต่จะตั้งกี่จิตนั่งบ้างเกิดจนรู้ตรงกันเราติงเนี่ยยังติดกันละติดเสียยากอีส์ and so I know there's a lot of people here today so in addition to this I want to just talk a bit about um, the general kind of procedure of Buddhism or the general kind of process อืมเดี๋ยวสงสัยกันละตาอากิยาตาที่ที่กลางนั้นยังจะเป็นชีวิตสมบัติแต่ในเดือนตัดทบายนะอันนี้ตอนนี้ได้จีสุสุกิตาพันธุ์สุวัตถุพายาจีตาจงอ่ะจงอ่ะที่จะพายาจีอันนี้ยุวิกิมากิตินีตานางละจีสุสุกิมจะบ้าตาสิ่งเดินดูเอ็มดูเทตังเอ็มสุดโรจีกิโลวาสตาตา啦，他他是吧啦？他怕是吃了的，刚上个大的，出去大没把你给弄呢。他他的刚上个大没带了，怕松啦。那，的刚上个大没带了，怕对搞啦的呢。去些我们的人啥个大的，用啊一些的蓬布，金巴要买的呗。他说他们去了，刚要买把马鸡巴鸡，他说怕压。你给弄的那大生意的都没得带，大去都买来了。那是。อันนั้นจะต้องลงตรงเทเรโอ้ก็กางซ่าดามิเตนบุตรดูกาลาเรียบะเทเรโอ้จิตัดที่กางซ่าดามิเตนบุตรดูกาลาคนที่ถ้าต้องการสู้ยืดยิ้มกับจิตพักกี้จงว่าอิจฉาชาชาลจะเป็นจงว่าอิจฉาถ้าเทมายิ่งเป็นจิตเสียงก็ร้ายได้โอ้แต่สุดท้ายพายาจินิที่กินน้ำลูกเลยสุสิกินจมบัตอันดับหนึ่งจมบัตอันดูเอ็มดูเทตักยูรูตักกู and so what we're doing here in this practice then uh, is that we are taking our um, Our bodies, which are made up of these elements, which are physical, you know, they're substantial and physical, and we set them aside, and then we take these other non-physical mental processes, our mind and feelings and so forth, and we set them there, and we look at them, we examine in them, and see if that thing that we grasp at as our self exists in those things or not. And so this is the process which in Buddhism we refer to as the Um, the seeking or the analysis of the self of persons or the individual self. And then the song that that coaching, no, the 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 that that that, because that the young le young child that, because the make the masoni, the the chow pa down the kavla. And then also that when the lose the big the, the so time chila pa down the yota. เป็นยุ่งไอ้เจ้าล่ะสุปตังอ่ะสุดท้ายยุ่งไอ้เจ้าสิจิมตังอ่ะรังกูรู้กูรู้ภาษาเดลัยอ่ะภาษาอังกฤษแต่ที่นู่นเขาด่าจะไม่บ้างเดสโอลาภาษาก็เสรีไม่ได้เลยภาษาเชียร์นะตังกินตังกูอ่ะตอนนี้ดูดีนะลูกคนอ่ะยังไม่ดูจีเรียกตาเป็นนะเอ่อตาตาก็จะไม่ได้ภาษาเชียร์ตังกี่อย่างเลยล่ะตาตาดีลูกเด็กนี่ต้องการได้นะใช่ป่ะแล้วก็ด่าแม่บ้านเสด็จเขาพักกินนังเดจังไม่บ้าจ้ะ阿帕吉达吉吉呀呀吉嘛，伊吉了就是个绿的，所看起来看起来吉那三百个，对呢。OK， 他是五个的是吧 ？And then if we go further from there, we open our mind, our eyes a bit wider to not just seek this、uh, self which exists within the body, but then we seek out what is the nature even of the body itself. And so we open our eyes further and we start to examine、um, further outside of just our individual self experience, but even to the nature of things themselves, like such as moving into the body itself. Like just for one example, we can take our head and we can say,、um, "Is there some singular, solidly existing head, or on what basis do we label the word head, or do we say that head exists?" And we examine in that way. Then I get lapa. Ta ve tende ta ngaso lapa chik sikirba te ta ina tigi nalo la tene pa shimjog dau chieng wotan dau tina. 
And then, um, you know, like our hand, like we consider the hand one singular thing, but then we start to investigate. What is that? Mm-hmm. So like when we think of the head, you know, we can pull out each individual hair and we can say, is this hair the head? And of course, we would say that's not the head, right? And then we go through the dip, you know, the, the skin on your head and we say, well, that's not the head. That's just the skin from your head and the, the bones in your head. So, well, that's not the, the head. That's just your, your skull or whatever the different uh, arteries and, and so forth that flow through your head, uh, the brain and the things inside the brain, all the different parts that make up the brain. And we go through each of those things and seek out some solidly singular existing head. And we realize that none of those things are the head. And we can apply this to our entire body. When we, when we examine this body further, all we end up finding is actually the elements. And so in Buddhism, the Buddha, the Buddha taught four elements and sometimes discussed five elements. But when we consider the fifth element, that is space, which is just some emptiness or openness. So what's really there, like substantially, are the four elements. And when we examine seeking out the body or these parts of the body, all we end up finding is actually the elements. And then when we examine the individual elements themselves, for example, if we look to the earth element and we examine and break down the earth element, we the uh, uh, all we find are its uh, subsequent parts, and we don't find some individual earth element. So there's many more things. There's like these other eight things. There's individual presentations of how these things are broken down in Buddhism that we don't really need to get into right now. But anyway, at a certain point of this investigation, it gets to a point where it's difficult to even find or to say that we can find anything which we refer to as the actual earth element. And so, uh, we don't need to get into all the details of that, but basically what's happening is that when we do this investigation, and when at the end of the investigation, we don't find some singularly, like solidly existing thing that exists in the way that our mind grasps at it, we call that emptiness. Mm, that's so. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And if we were to tell someone who had a, a high level education that that uh, nature that emptiness is the nature of all things, then I don't think there's anything that they would, um, you know, any reason for them to be scared of that. 
And so that is the uncommon or very particular vision or uh, what was seen or the way that things were seen by the Buddha. And so that's what we refer to as the ultimate truth. And then on the other side of that, we have the conventional or fictitious truth. And what that means is that when uh, all of the correct interdependent causes and conditions come together, then by the power of the joining together of those causes and conditions, then you know anything that we experience in this world becomes possible. And so everything we could say on that level exists. For example, like when all the right causes and conditions, I here exist. I can eat food, I can lay down, I can go places, I can talk to people. All of that potency is there, all of that potential is there through the coming together of these causes and conditions, and that's what's referred to as what people usually translate as conventional truth. The word literally means fictitious or false level of truth or concealed truth. <laughs> Tinon and so, uh, because nothing exists singularly as it is on its own, um, it is through the combination and the joining of various conditions coming together that like when two things come together, then they have a particular potency, a, partic a particular and specific um, you know, power within that. And then when they're joined with yet another condition, another object, another, another thing, they develop yet a different potency. They become something even different. And that's because nothing exists as it is by itself on its own. It's only through the coming together of these causes and conditions that through these, um, the various powers of these various causes and conditions that we can have this unimaginably you know, expansive and diverse um, experience of things and potent potencies and potentialities of various comings together. Mm -hmm. And so before we were talking about uh, cause and effect, karmic cause and effect, <laughs> in terms of, uh, in quite coarse terms. And here we're talking about basically the same principle, but on a more subtle level. And when we talk about it on that level, we refer to it as interdependence. And so that interdependence is that, uh, that, that joining together, that uh, joining together of causes and conditions that brings about this inconceivably vast, um, you know, multitude or diversity of potencies. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why the Buddhas the Buddhists refer to as the Buddha as the omniscient one 
is because they say that the Buddha not only knows all things, he also knows the nature of all things. And so when we understand that situation and then we um, place our minds or rest our minds, leave our minds in the awareness or in that um, true reality, then we can understand, we can know all things and the nature of all things. And by the power of that, we are liberated from all of our suffering and we attain the highest unsurpassed level of happiness. And so what I was talking about today then was that this general presentation of the way the Buddha sees things, the way that uh, Buddhism functions or the way that um, Buddhism works, the way that Buddhism proceeds as a path. And so this is the foundation of all of that. So if any of you have any questions, go ahead and prepare those questions and type them into the chat. And while you're doing that, I'm going to say a little bit more because it usually takes some time to get the questions coming in the chat. Yeah. Ani ta pena ngaso dwala chiko kasengo ta chi hindo wachi pe chane jaba ina dela tene kasere loma mambondo phagi dela mapondo reba chila ringbondo chila thumthundo seni so if we think about trees, then, you know, some of them have longer leaves. Some of them have smaller leaves. Some of them have uh, red leaves. Some of them have green leaves. And so if we need to understand the reasons for all of that, then all we can really say is that it comes through the power of particular like interdependent causes and conditions through the interdependence of various causes and conditions. Some of them took, uh, you know, more causes and conditions for that process to happen, some less. But anyway, the, the potency or the, the, um, the, the resultant kind of thing that we see is all uh, through the coming about through the power of this interdependence of various causes and conditions. Uh-huh. <sighs> Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's how we establish kind of the basis or the ground on which we work in Buddhism. And so then when we talk about a path, what we're talking about is two aspects. So one, is an aspect of realization or seeing that reality. 
The other is that is the way in which um, that can serve as an antidote to things that are contrary to our insight or to our development. So what is this, um, you know, contrary power that we're trying to overwhelm? That is our ignorance or our, our unawareness. And so um, the way that uh, this path serves as an antidote to that then is that we're trying, what we're doing then is seeing the reality. And so that seeing that awareness is the contrary force to unawareness or to ignorance. And so that's the nature of things. They are in a nature of an, a, an interdependent relationship that once you have seen something, then your not seeing of that thing naturally dissipates. That's just the reality of it. That's the, the interdependent connection between seeing and not seeing. Once you have seen it, once you become aware, then your unawareness of that naturally falls away. Oh, that's so. Yeah, that's the number two. You're not the one who's going to be able to do it. You're the one who's going to be able to do it. Uh, so if you all have any questions, please go ahead and enter those questions into the chat. Uh, uh, we still have about 20 minutes left right now. ตาเตละตาเตโคเปตาริงเงยชิวะนาเกตามะริกปาเตละโคตาทาระชุเกยเยบชานิอะเนตาธรรมะเตละโคตาภะกิติมะริกปายะปะชาตะจิบะชามะ
Okay, so then we have a question from, uh, it, it just says anonymous attendee in the chat. And it says, the steps you outline for a session for practice are impermanence of yourself and imper- in, uh, investigation of selflessness of persons by investigating the aggregates. Is my understanding right? So Ken Rinpoche said, yes, this, this impermanence meditation then can serve or should serve as a preliminary to your main practice meditation, which in this case, if it, if it is the selflessness of the persons, then yes, you should, you should use impermanence as a preliminary meditation and then move into the impermanence of, uh, or sorry, into the selflessness of your, the, the person that is your individual personal selflessness. That's it. And then, uh, that didn't know the master, get a machine, but chick, that car, you know, said, that, ninja, that, ニンジェティニャムデテネトンニディゴンシュゴンニャムデレニンジェティゴンゴレシニンジェティアペナヤンナンゴニンゴネペニンジェティグクニランチェアネディニテネムトゥチニタリゲナンジェチニマムトゥ
And so uh, just like that, when we're looking for the head, looking for the body and so forth. And I think that it's actually much easier to begin with the self of phenomena by looking at your own body. That's it. And then when we transfer that from our own body, then we can apply that to the bodies of others because it's very easy to transfer because we're, we already did that on our body. So we're working with something that's very similar to what we've already examined. So we transfer that to other bodies. And then through that, we can start to understand through our um, types of selflessness meditation, we can understand really the reality or the situation of all living beings. So mm-hmm. Nasu and so if we want to see the reality of everything, then it's important, just like when you want you to see more in the dark, you make your lamp brighter, you make your fire burn brighter. And so when we take like this reality, like these levels that we've talked about here, and just focus your power into developing the power of that, that's what we consider the most important. Otherwise, if you keep trying to think of a bunch of other small aspects, like the emptiness of this and that and everything, then that can actually just cause more confusion and maybe cause more uh, of a lack of an ability for you to cut through your doubts and gain certainty. So the real power comes from um, gaining more uh, of a deeper and more profound understanding of um, of these processes, like this this level of emptiness or selflessness that we talked about, and then through the power of developing that one one level of practice or that one direction of practice, the power of that realization will lead you to the seeing of that reality in other things. So that brings that expansion of that wisdom or that realization. Lasso chick <laughs> so George uh, said, Ken Rinpoche, yesterday during the Tsok, uh, Guru Rinpoche Tsok, we chanted the phonetic Tibetan prayers more slowly. This helped me participate more. I don't want to be disrespect or impolite, please, but uh, why do we say the English so fast in the Tara Sadhana? Thank you. The practice is very meaningful. He said, no problem. We can, we can recite it slower. I don't think it was like thought thoughtfully or meant to be fast. Um, uh, uh Ani 
Okay. And so Lorela asked, Hey, Justin, my question is if you've gone through all the analysis of impermanence and emptiness and get it, then what does he recommend to follow on meditation to have an actual re realization? So going from the point of getting the understanding or the meaning or not finding, you know, in the selflessness or a, or a seeing of that uh, impermanence to get from there to realization, then you need to meditate in that thing that you found. So in impermanence, you've seen impermanence. You just need to meditate in that state of seeing impermanence. For um, emptiness, then you have not found something at the end of your analysis. Then you meditate in that not finding, and that will lead you to realization. Um, da ngaco da yang chi de ngaco gom da chi lo mambo gom ne da. Sem this da shiwa la madroa che churu droa drona deni che karichao res. Sem sem koran le antes charu droa tare ya ngaso nyam le la noto showe tare karirisa. That's all. That di ale dorun droa tere wala. Rela o churu droa da da duru droa da. Ale la so. It's too good. Ale test the caresses, don't you? Jade Dowage Chaka Mendo Seta, Tela the Jaw in the Gabla, and Ta Gom de Caserita, Nyam, Nyam, Gnone, Tambu, Cobsalat, and Tops on Samara, which a tavern rose Samara, Jayore, De Rajig Isla. And so, um, is there's another question here that says, Is it natural for the mind to get more turbulent after uh, years of meditation? Is this a matter of awareness of it getting more subtle or of wrong practice? And so, Kennebrew said, There's a couple different ways that this could be happening. And so, one of them is, um, uh, discussed in the um, the stages at which your mind comes into a more restful or abiding state, where when your mind starts to become more restful, it you have a sensation yourself that your mind has become more disturbed, and that's the first of these stages that is described in the text. That that you will feel like your mind is actually coming to rest, but you will feel like your mind has become a bit more disturbed. <laughs> Tak rayat juga lah, tak kari sedi susu juga pagi tak, gombi mengatan mende, riba, gombi mengatan mende je, ini cik sem la khat se de riba tak, ko khat se de di kala, ini ko pe cik draw je le jupa di kono ko de yuk de na ko yang pagi le cik tolong ni cik je di kala draw la. Ah, kena mesti de sem khat se sem kari se udah la. あ、か、たつもんだおっせね。かじこでじひよまれわたこ。なぜ。でんでこ、ゴンビメガンでね、でばメガンめちえ。たこ、でじひよまれたこ、ニュラシエにこ、ドロテソルジュパーゲンでち
um, you know, closing off of our mind or our mind becomes kind of weaker. And so um, when our bodies are, you know, getting older, but our minds don't get, uh, our minds stay the same age, you know, our minds are not getting older, but our minds get kind of frustrated with our bodies and so forth. And there's some, something there too. There's some disturbance that can come about from that. So I think it could be, you know, one of those situations. Um, um, I'm going to move into another question because there's like a bunch of questions from the same person. I'm going to skip ahead because we're out of time. Um, Chick debate, Dachik digi, or doxing and debate, Dachik, or the Fiji issue, the Gamida, which injured a lot. This chick dig go a pay Kalakapo yesterday, Moranga. Nadi Chick de go to Mendoz, Tang Anso Gay. Ah, Nanso get dogs and they nanso get dachig. Hmm. Um, sorry, Helen. I know that this question is important and we don't have time, but I would need to actually discuss this with you to ask this question, I think. Um, it's a quite difficult thing to say. Um, uh, can you see that they did chicken and the injurella or? I think ダンスにでがまれせてかんでラブですよ。ああ。ダンスにでがまれせ。かんでラブです。なそ。あれでレンドカルジャムやされてねえちしだよこらこうもてかんでラブ。だちたんげでちでらんでくんでやら。ペナ
And so, Lindsay, um, you said when you meditate on what you've found through analysis, do you mean shamatha meditation? And so, um, we need to distinguish that. But what we're talking about in that point is actually a union of shamatha and vipassana. And what that means then is that your mind's resting, staying in that state. That aspect of your mind is shamatha, but your mind, which is seeing, is looking at, not looking at, just seeing the thing that you found through analysis is insight. It is insight means seeing, you know, seeing something special, seeing something superior to what you had seen before. And so when you are meditating at, at the result of the analysis, you're, you're seeing the result and that is insight. And when you get into a higher level of practices, then just even talking about shamatha as its own, it's always merged with vipassana. And when you talk about vipassana, it's always merged with shamatha. So they become very merged at a certain point. Oh, la so da then so uh da summer lend you have to la da jigs on la la so and then the then daddy tongue as a dirty timon wagge so the tennis here and as a dirty young pageta tan yamle they sequoia chimbo chimbo the name nang and take it at his own that is so so you can pong the attend of red and cup dwell at that chick. Marigba said to get at the so. Kali could talk to the tent in a cook, Pagilata. Ah, Kali, Kali Pak, down the ching end of his own roach. Draw the net down. And a young Cassidy Marigba de Saint Tops Cartini. Ah, and a Cassidy Yamel Yarding it up, did it? That Mongoji or was. And so I was speaking, you know, in terms of Vipassana here in a very general way. And there are many, you know, individual ways that this can be practiced. And so um, this ignorance can be worked with with methods which gradually and slowly um, kind of purify or dissipate that ignorance. And others where it is kind of forcefully brought to a halt. So there's many different ways of working with that. Mm -hmm. And that is also that he so so good that the tabuponita are chepatent, mambuores. So those are distinguished by the various methods, and there are many such methods. So, and in the song, Banta Kache, Kasere Tata, Jig Tari Hibanagi. อ่าอย่าอย่าจีหลุงดูกับล่ะอ่ามากี้เกิดบาดเสร็จตรงบ่ตาก็จะเรตรงบ่ตาจีกิดตินโรคทุกข์อยู่มาเรสเป็นน่
like for example when you're first learning the alphabet of your a b c d's and uh, at first when you first learn a you don't know b but then once you uh, know a and b you start to learn them you know them kind of as a unit that when you hear a you think of b and b you think of a and so forth ละ。ตาเป็นเชียงเราจริงๆเป็นดอกเตอร์จังยาซอนเราเตซายส์ตาเชนิกจังยาเราเตนี่ติกาละโคเปดีจังจิติงาซอบิติกาเราจังดิ
um, we should meditate on these factors of impermanence and so forth. And so in the Four Noble Truths, there is a teaching called the 16 factors of the Four Noble Truths. And the first three of those are impermanence, suffering, and selflessness. And those are the primary three that we should be focusing on. And those three are things that, you know, in our worldly experience are things that um, there's nothing about them that we can't understand. They're things that we can naturally see in our own lives and experiences. And if we progressively and gradually work our way through those and meditate on those, then we will get ourselves to a point where we will gradually and naturally be able to understand more and more and progress more and more. Mm-hmm. And then when our mind uh, improves more, uh, when we're practicing, then our mind, our, our practice needs to serve as a direct antidote to that ignorance. It needs to be directly countering that ignorance. And so there's, you know, ways uh, as to whether we're going to follow a progressive path for countering that ignorance or whether we're going to use the methods which can forcefully counteract and forcefully stop that ignorance. And that depends on your actual level of mind. So that's up to the individual. Okay. Then that ring the bala, that's a, that's a number zone, that's a mala, any, uh, to get this. So thanks for everyone, uh, to everyone for coming here today, for joining us. So since I had, we had a lot of time this year, I ended up teaching online a lot this year. So thanks everyone for joining us and for listening. And so whether this is helpful for you or not, that's up to you to see. And whether this is true for you or not is also up to you to see. And so previously when I was say, telling you that um, I'm not wow. basing teaching on one particular text, um, what I meant was that I didn't have a text that contains all of the things that I wanted to talk about all into one text that I could give you or that I could teach on the basis of, and not that what I was teaching is not based in the Buddhist text or the Buddhist teachings and just things that I'm making up over here. So everything that I was talking about here is is strictly based in the Buddha's teachings, but the Buddha taught in three different stages of teachings, what we call the three turnings of the wheel of Dharma. And for me to go through all of these stages and discuss all of these aspects in just a couple hours of teaching, I didn't have a text which collected all of that information into one text. So I was summarizing a lot of points from various uh, Buddhist texts and Buddhist teachings in order to give you this complete kind of picture that I wanted to give you today. And it's not just something that I made up out of my own imagination. <laughs> So thanks to Justin for translating as well. As well. <laughs> as well. And then I get that one all the old Taruna and James. Ah, Karen, James. Rub. Rub. Uh-huh. Alam Mada. And it may la supata, Kunaba, Tugiche, and Chinamatis. Ali now I'll take in Naga than I hit to Gorimado, Yenda hit to Marvas. 
<laughs> and thanks also to all of my uh, helpers that I've had who helped me be able to teach online, who was uh, James Coran, James Grubb, Alma, and May, who all did all the work to make sure that all of this was set up so that we could do this. <laughs> it's really great. It's so easy, you know, like uh, it's so simple. They set everything up, I come, I talk, and then I leave, I go lay down, and they clean up everything. It's great, right? <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Debbie, it's the 16 factors of the four noble truths. I'm sure if you look it up online, you'll find a Wikipedia or a Rikpa Wiki or something like that. Lazola. Lazola.